Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So my name is Katie and today we're going to be talking about my most surprising books of 2020. So these are books that kind of surprise me with how much I love them. So they're not quite like my top overall 10. Oh, hello. And I've got my new kitten. Let me get her. Here she is. She probably doesn't like the ring light. Hey, you're gonna have a cuddle. Yeah. Aww. She's so cute. So we'll see how long she can stay <laughs> in my arms. Um, oh, my hair's all messed up now. Oh well, it's worth it for Katie. So yeah, I can't, um, I don't know how old she is. So she called Maisie, <laughs> we finally came up with a name. Um, uh, she was 12 weeks when we got her. So now she'd be about 14 weeks. So she's the little baby. <laughs> she always looks quite big on camera but she's she's quite small oh um yeah so I'll just start talking about my <laughs> entertaining books and we'll have a little cuddle so yeah so the first one on my list is The Bone Ships um by RJ Baker and this one I think I was just I don't know why I wasn't expecting to like love this one as much as I did I feel like I was just expecting it to be kind of like a standard fantasy I don't know but like it grew on me so much throughout the book and oh, and she ooh. <laughs> she's a little cuddle monster and yeah the main character Joran he's like this grumpy sailor and basically at the start of the book um his ship gets taken over by this like captain called Lucky Mace and she kind of is like whipping the crew into shape because John's kind of like go to sort of waste and and so and she kind of takes John under her wing as like an apprentice and it's basically just it's very like piratey so if you like pirates <laughs> you definitely like it and it reminds me quite a bit I was reading it at the same time as like the Ship of Magic series by Robin Hobb the Life Ships trader series and oh, and it reminds me a lot of that um yeah so if you like that series i think and also the bone shard's daughter like oh she's eating me and yeah the bone shard's daughter and jovis reminds me a lot of joron did i say his name was jovis to start with jovis is from the bone shard's daughter and joron is from the bone ships <laughs> well i'm too confused yes yeah, so his name's joron and yeah so lucky mace takes him under his wing and yeah, it's just like, it's so piratey and there's some like, like pirate conflicts and they're trying to hunt down this um, Kishan, which is like the last sea dragon. Um, and yeah, but th so they're trying to kill it to prevent it like being used to make more bone ships. But then there's some like twists along the way and ew, <laughs> snack time. Her favourite food at the moment is Katie's fingers and toes. <laughs> mm, stop eating me <laughs> look at this I'm being attacked oi just gonna hold her like a baby okay <laughs> we took four minutes to talk about that book okay so the next one is the girl who could move with her mind and and this was another one which I wasn't expecting to like love as much as I did but it was so good like honestly it, it was like the kind of pacing and plot was like flawless I only gave it 4.5 stars I think because I feel like it just didn't quite have that five star feeling but like the um yeah just the um it was really good it was like a thriller type thing and but it's kind of the government like Oh, where are we going? Government like conspiracies and these kind of people are like working for the so we're following Tegan and she has um like oh she's off and she has powers of psychokinesis, which is she can move stuff with her mind. Um and so she is sort of working for this like government agency type thing, um like a secret agency. Oh, getting pounced on. <laughs> Um, yeah, so she's working for this like secret 
government agency and but then she, these murders start happening of these people who've been like strangled by crowbars and everyone blames Tegan because they think she's the only one that could have done it with her like power of telekinesis so it sort of becomes and then they sort of end up on the run because Tegan's being um, like framed and but there's also this the actual murderer character we're also kind of following his POV and just how they interact and it's really good like yeah and there's like twists and turns and the plot the plot is just so good um and I just flew through it because I was having the best time reading it um so yeah I'd highly recommend that one next we have Soul of the Sword which is the second book in the Shadow of the Fox series so when I read Shadow of the Fox I like enjoyed it but I didn't love it I think it was like a 3.5 star for me but then I read the sequel and I just enjoyed it so much. Like, I feel like you get so much more. You get the kind of found family and you get this sort of, yeah, the like adventure. And then Hakai Mono, the like evil sword guy. I love him. Um, yeah, so I feel like if you didn't love Shadow of the Fox, then give this one a try because it really surprised me with how much I love it. And now I really like, it's one of my favourite like YA series. So yeah, it's just such a fun series and it's kind of, it gives you like kind of anime vibes so yeah so in the first book we're following Yumeko who's like this half kitsune and she basically she's been brought up in a monastery and she um the monastery is like attacked and she um is sent away with this like scroll which is like the secret to something or other <laughs> she's down here she likes to get up to mischief <laughs> um and she's sort of she she meets this guy called Tatsumi and they sort of team up together but Tatsumi is actually hunting for the scroll but Yumeko kind of oh, <laughs> um, keeps it a secret that she has it and yeah and there's just so much good like YA drama and angst and it's a really great series so yeah this one definitely surprised me with how much I love it. Okay, then next we have Tea Dragon Tapestry, which is the third book in the Tea Dragon Society series. And this is another one that, like, I read the Tea Dragon Society and kind of liked it, but didn't love it. But then I read the art for Tea Dragon Tapestry and I loved it so much. It was just so kind of, the, like, art style is so beautiful. It's, like, very autumnal. And just the story and its messages I thought was so beautiful. You're going to come back for a cuddle. She's back. She's looking to what mischief she can get up to. Um. Yeah. So the art style is so beautiful, and it really deals a lot with kind of caring for someone who's grieving, which I thought was really beautiful. And also the sort of when you've left a home, but you're kind of in a new home, and sort of the missing your old home but also being very glad you're in your new home and I feel like that was so beautifully done as well and yeah I think I said it already but the art style is just stunning so yeah oh, I don't know. almost as cute as Maisie oh she's off where are you going <laughs> she's happy there okay the next we have Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nigi Vo. And this is another one. So I don't I don't usually love novellas. Nigi, baby position. <laughs> um, but yeah, Tammy read this one and she absolutely loved it. And it was already kind of on my radar, but then her like hype made me want to read it. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Her Nigi Vo's writing is just so stunning and it reminds me a lot of sort of Becky Chambers type feeling. Like when you're reading it, you just sort of feel like a warm hug. And the like story is so sort of, it's like a, it's a really good story, but it's so kind of heartwarming at the same time. Um, oh, eating Katie time again. Um, yeah, and it's just, so in the, in Empress of Salt and Fortune, we're kind of following, um, so we're following Chi, who's this monk, and they are sort of getting a story told to them by this sort of figure. Um, and it's sort of telling that in the past the story of this empress who kind of gets sent away and she sort of lived with her like handmaidens and there's a bit of sapphic romance in there <laughs> so yeah it's just a really great novella I feel like it's oh we're getting eaten hey hey look at this oi <laughs> she's a bit she's a bit crazy we call her crazy Maisie because she likes to run around. 
She's been up the tree a few times. But you're also very cuddly, aren't you? Ugh. I'm gonna put you down if you keep attacking me. She's now like wedged herself onto my arm. <laughs> oh. Okay, you can go and explore the rest of my room. Yeah, so that one's really good. So then next we have Ship of Magic, which is the first book in the Live Ship Traders series. So I read Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb at the start of the year. And like, I didn't love it. I thought, I really like the writing style. It's very like relaxing. <laughs> um, but I don't know, I just wasn't very invested in like, oh, <laughs> can you see this? Let me put the camera down. Look, there she is. <laughs> Tagging the camera. Not the camera, the chair. <laughs> Oh, you silly Billy. Okay, I'll try and get it back at the right angle that it was now. Okay, sorry if we're at a slightly different angle. Okay, she's gone now. <laughs> yeah, so the live ship series. So we're following these kind of family called the Vestrids. And they're this like trader family. And in the world, each kind of trader family has their own live ship. And live ships are like ships which are kind of sentient. Um, and it's basically you're just kind of following the like live ship, <laughs> no not the live ship, the Vestrid family drama. <laughs> the Vestrids are so entertaining, like as a family to watch. Um, and yeah, we're also following this pirate Kenneth who's trying to unite all the pirates to become the pirate king. Um, and then his storyline sort of interacts with the Vestrids. And yeah, it's just really good. And it's a really kind of interesting look at like humanity and the sort of, I always feel like a lot of books are like good people doing bad things, but this series is kind of bad people doing good things. <laughs> um, yeah, and I was just really surprised by how much I enjoyed it and just the kind of whole like trader family type dynamic I always love. And also the um, the ship setting. Also, I always say ship, like the nautical setting with like the pirates and the ships. And I really like those kind of settings. I know they're not quite as popular, but... Yeah, I really like them. And also my my top 10 or my favourite pirates, fictional pirates video will be coming <laughs> at some point. And then next we have Do You Dream of Terror 2 by Temi O. And this one is another one which I wasn't expecting to love as much as I did. Um, is following these kind of, I think, is it, I think five um, like teenagers and they've been sort of trained in this academy to like be sent into space to try and go and colonise this other planet called Terra 2 and it's just really following them and like their kind of inner struggles so they at the start of the book they kind of get sent um away on the ship to like on the way to Terra 2 and it's just kind of really looking at the sort of emotional and like mental consequences of it's like, it's like, like, like psychosis no was it psychiatric no Ugh. my brain too medicalized psychological that's it <laughs> Um, the psychological consequences of sort of being in space and being very isolated and only having like very few people with you and the sort of kind of mental health like difficulties that people might encounter and yeah and then towards the second half the like plot really like starts happening and it's very like dramatic and yeah I was just surprised with how good it was um so yeah that's another really great sci-fi because I think I thought it wasn't going to be like as good as it was and as nuanced as it was because it's like I I don't know if I saw it compared to the 100 or something which I can see the comparison because but instead of like being sent onto earth they're being sent into space but also it's so much more like complex <laughs> and um yeah and I was also really impressed with the medical knowledge actually <laughs> um yeah so that that was a little tidbit um, but then I think the author has like a neuroscience degree, so that's probably why. <laughs> okay, then the next one is Theonite Orbit, or just Theonite series in general by Emil Wang. So I read Sword of Kagan and loved it. Um, but then I read her other series because I just wanted to read everything she'd ever written. And I know I'd heard like the other series wasn't as good or it was like, yeah. And I don't think it's quite as good as Sword of Kagan, but I still loved it. It kind of has middle grade vibes. And this, especially the second book, you get this like really like found family and the characters are just so lovable. So like Joan and Daniel are the two main characters. And I think we meet Daniel in sort of Kaigen. But yeah, and then, and we also, in the second one, we also meet one of the Izumo, I think it's called, which is Masaki's youngest son. And then some other characters who are like on the space station. And it's just, it's so much fun. And it was so like enjoyable and just so like heartwarming. And I just love these little kids so much. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, I just really enjoyed it. Um, 
yeah I think especially the first one I think I gave maybe four stars and then the second one five stars because it was just it's like just so heartwarming <laughs> and yeah and the plot's really good as well and I think it kind of explores a lot about um like sort of being an outsider in a new place or like not quite fitting in and as well not just like in a new place but like within your own like family and stuff and um, yeah so I think that's a really great um series and I'm so sad we'll never get a third one <laughs> um but yeah okay and then finally we have the space between worlds by Mikaya johnson and um, this is another one which like i was expecting to kind of like but i was so surprised with like how well done it was and like the kind of plot twists and the like some of the like emotional stakes and also how invested i was in the romance <laughs> um and yeah just the kind of i feel like it has that kind of almost gangster type drama vibe which is the same thing as like the girl who can move shit with her mind that's very like la gangster grunge type setting and this one also has a bit of like that and cara the main character she's very like badass and but she also has this like heart of gold and yeah so we're following cara and basically in the world they can like travel between worlds but you can only travel to a world where you're like parallel self has died so Ankara has like is dead in a lot of the worlds a lot has happened to her in all these different worlds so yeah so Kara is like working for the government to kind of she goes to like retrieve information or stuff from the other worlds but yeah but there's like a lot more kind of to this to this travel between worlds and she sort of ends up embroiled in this like big conspiracy and then as well as the like government type conspiracy there's also these kind of gangster characters who are also like involved and it's, it's just really good and <laughs> um, so yeah i'd highly recommend this one i especially if you like sci-fi but not just sci-fi i feel like this is a good one for people who like maybe don't love sci-fi because it's just it kind of almost has like thriller type feeling um <clears throat> but yeah and there's a sapphic romance which is i was so invested um yeah so that's that one so let me know in the comments what your favorite what your most surprising read of 2020 was and if you enjoyed the video please give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already and I hope you're all having a great day and I will see you next time